Hey, everyone. <laughs> I'm running a bit behind. I'm, I'm a little unorganized because as I came to sit down, my William Dam order showed up. I was, I was, I'm in my room where I can see people driving into my driveway. I saw a male lady drive in and I was like, oh, my seeds, my seeds. So this, this is super exciting because I've, I've been waiting for this to be able to do my, my, my pepper seed starting. Pretty much all of my seeds that are for my farm and everything are, are in that box. But today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you what I got from Johnny's Seeds, my Johnny Seeds order. <laughs> hey everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really love Johnny's. This, this, I always make sure that I shop from Johnny's very last because I find them very, very tempting, but I'm in Canada and they're in the States, so it's it's not as easy for me to shop from them um, as it is for me to shop from my, my uh, domestic seed providers. Um, but this, this is their catalog. Apparently, because I bought seeds from all these companies last year, I was automatically on all their, their catalog uh, mailing lists. Uh, I don't normally like, I try to like not order seed catalogs because I just, I find them too tempting, but here, flip through. If you guys don't have one of these, it's, it is, it's one of those horribly tempting full, yeah, like look at that, that right there. That's like a dangerous page. That's the reason why I'm not supposed to have seed catalogs. Um, I, and like for the catalog, I don't like, honestly, I don't even know because I, I don't look at catalogs. Um, but I use Johnny's website as a resource all the time. They're, they're pretty much my number one resource for getting growing information. They have excellent, 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 um, growing information for all of the varieties on their website. They'll have like a blurb that talks about what, what the, the seed is the specific seed is like and then under that they'll have like how to grow it and then they have just like a huge amount of like more detailed growing information that you can open up under underneath that they'll you know they talk about like germination temperatures and how many days and I really really used them a lot last year for my my flower farm section because last, I hadn't really grown any flowers before last year was like my first my first big uh, flower growing experiment and so I, I had no idea and to find out for like when I seed things to when the flower is going to grow and stuff like that I was having a really hard time finding that information but Johnny's had really excellent you know seed to flower um, info you know I'm, I'm so used to vegetables where it's like date DTM day to maturity um, and like that means like when you can harvest it so I I found Johnny's like not understanding flowers. Johnny's was having information I could completely understand. You know, it was detailed, but it was also simple and, and clear. So um, yeah, I, I really like them. And oh man, the options they have. I, <laughs> I made like for this order, I made this like huge list and, and then I had to like walk away and come back and delete everything because I was like, you're not allowed, <laughs> but pretty much, yeah, pretty much all I have in here is lettuce and then the things that were so tempting that I couldn't, I couldn't resist. So this is, this is all very exciting. Um, oh, and I saw someone asking where I am. I'm in uh, Canada, British Columbia, Kelowna. <clears throat> yeah, so, so I'm, I have a border crossing for all these seeds to come to me and Oh, my, my sad, I'll save my sad story for, uh, about how this order, well, okay, whatever. Uh, so this order was $700. I'm going to get off topic. I was going to try to get through the seeds. I'm, I'm trying really hard for this one, not to be a two hour video. <laughs> um, okay. So th this, this is my, uh, my sad, my sad tale of, uh, of me buying seeds from Johnny's because I'm Canadian, so everything's expensive for me. So here's what's in this box. Like, there's like nothing in here, right? It's a very, very empty box. Like, this this lettuce here, This you guys will laugh at this. 
Okay, let's see how much how much is the Salanova for the big one? My my biggie Salanova. Uh, okay, so this is a hundred and fifty five dollars American for this container of of Salanova seeds, um, but that's American. And so for me to buy this, you have to then like time add thirty percent onto that. So that's what is that thirty percent is forty five dollars. So now we're now we're basically up to two hundred dollars for this seed. And then um, this order when I when I picked it up, uh, I got I got dinged with uh, customs on it, and I had I had almost a hundred dollars worth of customs on on this order so i paid six hundred dollars for all the seeds that are in here but uh but then then i had an extra hundred dollars worth of customs so if we break down the custom percentage this if this was two hundred dollars that means that like thirty dollars worth of customs just on this so this container of five thousand lettuce seeds cost me two hundred and thirty dollars canadian and and that is my my sad story about having to buy buy from buy from uh, the states when I'm Canadian. But despite that, this that like if this container was like worth five hundred dollars, it would be so worth it because what this is, if you guys checked out my my uh, my seed list, this is my Salanova green sweet crisp. This is the lettuce that I said is so good, and like this stuff's crazy. This stuff, like, I know I keep going on and on and on about how great the Salanova is, but it's it's literally that good. It's it's worth its weight in gold, and it, I didn't quite pay its weight in gold because this, you know, this is pretty heavy. It's pelleted seed, so you know, there's a lot of clay clay weight in there. Um, but I might have paid like twenty percent of its weight in gold. Um, yeah, I, I was really, for if I'll use all the lettuce, I think I have about 11 or 12,000 lettuce seeds. And last year I bought 8,000 lettuce and I, I don't really have any leftovers. And we're, um, we, we always had four beds, four 50 foot beds of lettuce in production at all times. Um, and my beds hold about 400 heads of lettuce. So I always had four beds with 400 heads and we're wanting to up our amount this year to having six beds always in production. So that that means, you know, that 8,000, like, you know, plus another 50% for the for the 12,000. I, I, was, I was being really strict. I'd rather run out at the very end of the season. Um, but yeah, uh, it's the Salanova lettuce is a hybrid. Um, you could save seed if you wanted, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't come out as Salanova lettuce. Um, if, if you wanted to save seed, you'd, you'd be better off just buying, buying like a, you know, trusted open pollinator uh, seed. But I mean, the, like I said, it doesn't matter how much this is. This, it's always money well spent. Right? Like, okay, so like this, I wanted this to do the comparison. Really? I'm pretty sure it's a hybrid. It, it would be very hard for me to believe that it's open pollinated because it's so good. <laughs> um, okay, so my comparison, so this order was $700. This order was also, also $700, like, or somewhere in there. This, I mean, the boxes are the same size and I need to open this up and make sure I have, I have everything in here. But this is basically like my entire farm. This is, this is like everything I'm going to grow. <laughs> like th this is everything. And then this, this is lettuce, right? <laughs> so like I, this box is $700. The, and it like, it's the amount for me to like grow year round and have leftover seed. Um, in 8,000 square feet. And then this box is, is, uh, is $700 and it has 12,000 12, 12, lettuce seeds in it, but it's still, it's still worth the money, right? I mean, if, if it's open pollinated, you could try saving the seeds. It's probably not allowed because it's patented. Um, but I don't save any seeds. It's not worth my time. Even like, I know, I know this is expensive. The other thing too, um, I'm not going to crack this open, but let's see if I can show you guys on the bottom. Like, 
I, I know the glare is kind of bad. So this is like pelleted seed. You can kind of see like they're like these these little pebbles. It's really hard to seed lettuce. Um, whereas with the pelleted seed, it's super fast. It's super easy. So you know, like I bought I bought a, a couple different other in here. There, let's see what. I here, I got this Summer Crisp Lettuce Fusion, and it's pelleted too. And I, like, you can find the, this specific seed for half the price of what it is pelleted. Um, but when it comes to me doing, doing the, um, doing the farming, any, any time I can save is, is money well spent. You know, so, like I said, like, this seed here, 5,000 5, seeds cost me $230 when I break down like customs and everything. Um, you know, the, what is that? Like five cent a seed? This like, this, this is worth, you know, to be able to make this is worth 200. Like I, I'm very happy to pay someone, uh, $230 to be able to get this container ready to go. Um, the pelleted seed, they usually also have it like, so that the germination is really good. They do you know, they do some like processing to the seed. Um, yeah, so I, to, yes, I know it's expensive. I know I pay a lot of money on seeds, but it, to me, seeds are worth all the money in the world. I could save seeds. I could try to save money on seeds, but every, every dollar I spend on seeds is, is, is a dollar well spent. And I like, it's the same, it's the same as food, right? Like obviously like the stuff that I'm growing in my farm, you could go somewhere, find it for way cheaper. Like, you don't, my stuff is a little bit more expensive. My cats, uh, yeah, exactly. Not even five cents a seed. But, uh, but yeah, you, like, my, my produce is a little bit more expensive than what you'd maybe pay, like, you know, in, in this super cheap grocery store. Um, but, like, do I, do I think it's worth the money for someone to pay someone to grow that food to get it local? Yeah, totally. And you know, like I like I don't want to be a seed farm. <laughs> so I'm more I'm more than happy to like I I make money. I make money like even when I like spend 50 cents on a seed, I I still make money in in the end when I sell the stuff. So, you know, if if I like the Salanova is like way way nicer than any other lettuce that I can get that's only going to cost me, you know, like like you know, half of a penny. So, yeah, sure the the production cost of the five cent Salanova over, you know, the tenth of a penny um, a seed is is lower, and you know, so in the long run, I could have saved, you know, like two hundred, three hundred dollars on on my lettuce seed, but the quality of the product that I get on the other end is what makes it so I can sell this stuff for a premium. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, like. Like, like I have 12,000, 12,000 lettuce because, you know, I'm hoping to be able to, to sell, sell it. And then we sell our lettuce for, um, $3 a head or two for five. So, you know, if you assume that every single one of these seeds gets converted into 250, you know, last year we only sold about half of our lettuce, but it, you know, it was first year. We just didn't have anywhere to sell it. So even if you assume that last year, I only got a dollar twenty-five per head of lettuce because half of them went to waste. You know, the the five cents off of the dollar twenty-five, you know, is I still profited a dollar twenty, and I more than enough. Um, I like the speed for for like grow sowing, transplanting, harvesting, processing, and selling on the lettuce more than enough made money for me to like you know profit even labor like lettuce lettuce has a really good profitability to it um so but like you know i this the salanova like i always talk about the salanova like because we were really really shocked because we'd never grown it before because we'd never justified you know ordering this big box <laughs> like paying 700 dollars for lettuce like it never it never made sense for us to do that before just in our home garden whereas it made sense to do this for the for the um for the farm um but but yeah so the this was last year was our first year growing it and we'd heard so many good things about the lettuce 
like from other, you know, other farmers and growers. And we were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, we'll, like we'll grow it because of what people grew. But it, it, like, even with these big expectations out of like what it's going to be, um, just from how people talk about it, 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 it went beyond our expectations. So the, the, the Salanova I'm, I'm really, really happy with, I'm no way complaining that I spent $700 on seeds from Johnny's. I, I think it's money very well spent. Um, it's just, you know, sometimes, sometimes to get exactly what you want, it's, it's going to be expensive. And, you know, sometimes that makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. And, and like I said, I would have never done this. I would have never bought $700 worth of lettuce for my home garden. You know, I wouldn't have ever bought $100 worth of lettuce for my for my home garden because I don't even especially like lettuce. Like the Salanova basically converted me to wanting to eat lettuce salads. Previously to that, the only the only thing that, that I wanted to eat was like the, the red, giant red mustard. Like it was so tasty and so easy to grow that I couldn't be bothered with lettuce. Um, okay. Let me, let me show you guys the, the Salanovas and then, and then I'll answer the question about what makes it, what makes Salanova so special? What is so great about Salanova lettuce? I have four Salanovas here. Uh, okay. There we go. It's blowing my mind that this is open pollinated like like this like this stuff is so good it's hard to believe it's not like made in a lab it's like little robot lettuce it's so tasty okay so what I have is the majority of the lettuce that I grow because we use the Salanova for for our uh for our salad mix and the so the green sweet crisp this, this is our absolute favorite because um, it just the texture on it is really nice. The flavor on all the Salanovas is is really good, but the the t like this is like thick and crunchy and frilly, so it looks really really pretty. Um, and then so this is a green frilly lettuce, like you know kind of slightly open head lettuce. And then I also buy the red sweet crisp, which is the same same shape as as the green sweet crisp it's just red and like i got so i got five thousand of the green sweet crisp and then i got a thousand of the red just because i want it just to break up like for a bit of color um it i find the red sweet crisp is a little bit harder to grow than the green sweet crisp the like the salanova is super easy to grow but um i did so in the heat of the summer the red didn't do as good and i noticed that the red was a little bit more likely to get attacked like we had some some thripe like buggy problems and the red one was a little bit more likely to to get attacked by it and it, it grew a little bit slower which doesn't make sense because i'm pretty sure the green one is the is the longest day or maybe it's the shortest day let's see oh yeah okay the green is a 50 day to maturity where the red is 55 days to maturity and then the other ones that i got are the the green butter and the red butter and these like are so beautiful um i mainly like i bought a bunch of other lettuce to experiment with selling head lettuce i'm gonna keep this as my salad mix um but if i was if we have a lot of success with head lettuce and next year like i ramp up to doing more heads these are these are the these are the head lettuce that I do because these, they look like roses. They're so beautiful. Um, they're like as a head, like even as a mini head, like they're so pretty. They're, they're these, they're these, uh, like, like, you know, I was picking them about this size in the summer. I wasn't letting them get super big, uh, just cause we were having some issues, but yeah, they were just, and then like dense and dense and the red, the red is all, it's uh red on the outside, but then you open up the center and, and it's like, has like green. So it, it almost looks like a variegated rose. Um, people who bought the head lettuce, they always wanted these. Um, it's, it's a, the, let's see. Uh, green butter salanova and red butter uh, salanova there I think there's eight in like the salanova series um, but these are the only ones I've grown and it, like the green sweet crisp is my favorite 
Um, but th these other ones are so pretty. Whereas the other ones, they there's just no reason for me to try them because these work so well. Um, so the thing that makes Salanova so great is that it's like does well in the heat and it, it does really well in the cool. Um, but the thing that makes it for me, like I never want to buy anything else is the leaves are so like thick and dense, almost like think of like a romaine, like how like a romaine has that really thick, juicy core and the leaves are thick. Um, but then it's tender and it's sweet in the same way that, uh, in the same way that a butter lettuce is. And then it's like crunchy and frilly, almost like, like an iceberg lettuce. It's, it's this really, really unique texture. And Farmers really like it because if you're doing a salad mix, um, you do it by weight. And so the amount that the plant, like the plant stays quite compact, but it's dense. Like it, like you cut it and like you, you know, you have a pound, even though it looks like this small head. Um, so th there's a lot of lettuce. It's, it's a deceiving amount of lettuce. And then, you know, you fluff it up and it looks, it, you know, looks more more like what you think a pound of lettuce looks like um but because the leaf is really dense um it it keeps really good so like when we do the salad mix we cut it we bag it you know like it's in the bag we've had customers tell us it keeps for three weeks and the head lettuce our market is on friday afternoons and we like we get hot here it gets like a hundred here so like we'll be down at the market at the hottest time of the day we put out these heads of lettuce and because the leaves are so thick they they really hold they hold their shape in the heat so it other people going to the farmer's market you know if i had something like a really classic heirloom lettuce is like a red salad bowl or a green salad bowl and uh oh here you want to see seven hundred dollars of lettuce there you go whoa <laughs> 12, 12,000 seeds, <laughs> but I'm Canadian. So it's, it's a little deceiving. Um, yeah, the, the, this lettuce, it like sits out in the heat of the day and, and it has no issue. Um, we have like some, I bought, I bought some zipper bags from Uline. So like, you know, like a Ziploc bag type thing. Um, so then the customers can open and close it because we do half pound bags of lettuce. So that's, that's like when you go to the store and you buy those like boxes of lettuce, like it's, it's about the same size. So I wanted something that the customers could open and close again to make sure that the product stayed fresh in, in their fridges. Um, yeah. So the, the Salanova for me is, is worth all the money in the world because not only is it easy to grow, super, super tasty, um, but it also has like, it can handle being displayed at the market. Oh yeah, another thing about the order, I forgot, shipping. So Johnny's offers free shipping if you have $200 uh, or more and uh but not to canada and so my the flat rate shipping from johnny's to canada is 50 dollars, but with exchange that's 65 dollars. <laughs> yeah my my treasure chest <laughs> um and as, like as for the the plastic bags the salad mix is pretty much the only thing we do in the plastic bags we like we'd really love not to have it in plastic bags but it's there's just no other way that we found to be able to to keep it fresh um and i keep i keep telling everyone this that no one likes it but uh i was like you know head lettuce is the original zero waste salad mix you know if, if you don't want waste like i always have head lettuce for for that exact reason you know people people want the convenience of the salad mix and so you know when when i offered them the zero waste option of the head lettuce they they just buy the bag but um we're hoping to be able because we're hoping to get into the Kelowna farmers market um and that there's more of a customer base there and there's also more people who who are interested in not buying <laughs> buying stuff in plastic bags um so ideally we'd like to be able to bring a bulk bin and then people can bring their own containers and then we can fill their container um and then that way like we're not producing waste um but 
Uh, and our our position on uh, compostable plastic is that it breaks down to microplastic. I like I've I've yet to see proof that that these you know these biodegradable plastics actually are are truly biodegradable. Um, a lot of it a lot of it seems just like like greenwashing. Um, so you know I like I I think the best solution is is to not <laughs> get it in a bag, right? Rather than to rather than to you know have it oh no don't worry like this is biodegradable and we we also don't have commercial we don't have commercial composting in in our town which is the only way those biodegradable um bags even could possibly <laughs> biodegrade they're not they're not something that you can just throw in in your backyard compost so you know in even even if i was to get them it wouldn't actually be be a solution for anyone here you know it's it's the same as it's the same as like the like i could do it in a plastic clamshell and then it could be recycled but i mean how much plastic even gets recycled anymore you know i'm in i'm in can west coast canada i don't know of any plastic recycling plant anywhere near me you know and china doesn't want to take our plastic anymore yeah, I'm I'm almost of the opinion that maybe the the best solution is uh is to use a really lightweight plastic bag because then at least your volume per waste is lower. But you know, it's it, it's one of those it's it's impossible. It's a, it's an impossible thing. Like we you know we're trying to do our best, but it's it's really hard to come up with with the the actual actual solutions. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen lots I've seen lots of stuff about how they biodegrade, but I've I've also seen nothing that actually like answers my questions of it, like, you know, it's like it's like bamboo fabric, it's like or or those plastic bottles that are like made from plants. It's like well, it doesn't really matter if you transform if you transform oil into plastic or if you transform plants into plastic. The issue is like the chemical waste. But I, I'm, I personally, I'm not anti-plastic. I think plastic is an amazing, is an amazing thing. Like I, I, I think having, I think having like these little plastic bottles to be able to keep seeds in, like that's, that's amazing. That's, that's like, we, we live in a world of technology. Um, but, uh, but the, they just shouldn't be used once. We should like, you know, Johnny should send me a pack of seeds like this and then I can refill my Salanova bottles. Um, so my favorite cut and come again lettuce is Salanova, the Salanova lettuce, green, sweet, crisp is my favorite of the, of the Salanovas and you can get a couple, a couple cuts on it. Um, the problem with lettuce is it doesn't grow all season. Lettuce is, is an annual instead of like a bi, biannual. So that means that like le lettuce's goal in life is to is to become seed. So the second you put seed in the ground as lettuce, this lettuce is doing all it possibly can to turn into into lettuce seed. Um, and so you're just you're gonna run out of time on lettuce. The trick to getting lettuce all season is you have to keep planting lettuce. I I plant lettuce every two weeks and every two like you know and at the same time that I'm planting new lettuce. I'm, I'm planting, I'm pulling, I'm pulling old lettuce. I give lettuce about uh, six to eight weeks in the ground before I replace it with, with new lettuce. And the seedlings, I usually, like I do seedlings just so I, I use less space in my farm. Um, and I usually give the seedlings about three weeks before they get planted in. But yeah, the, tr the trick to lettuce is you keep planting lettuce. We, we made a video last year. I think it's like grow your best lettuce ever. Um, and we, we had some tricks with it because so many people struggle with the lettuce. It's, it's a really hard one. And then the other trick is to get a good lettuce. Um, okay, so the other lettuces that I got are, I'm just going to read these out. Um, I got, these are all these like summer crisp series. Um, and I got Nevada, Magenta, Cherokee, and Fusion. And 
the like we get quite hot here in the summer so getting getting lettuce that happily keeps growing in the heat is a, is a little tricky um so th these are a series of lettuce um that are similar to mir m u i r um yeah and okay so th this is a really good option cuz the one problem with salanova is that you can only get it from johnny's and if you're like me and you don't live in america then buying from Johnny's is a is a little difficult, um, but uh, Muir is another is another good summer lettuce that a lot of people like. Um, M U I R, uh, and and so I bought some of it from William Dam, but these are also like the of the same family as the as the Muir lettuce. Um, I forget. Here, let's see, maybe. Here. Oh, look at that. All these pictures so I can quickly find it. Um, let's see if I can find Muir in here. There should be like a whole section about them. They did on the website at least. Uh, yeah, because then like I'm I'm excited. I'm really excited to try these because the, the I've heard so many people um, talk about the mirror. Um, I don't have a paper pot transplanter. Um, it's, it's expensive. Like it's expensive to buy and it's expensive to use. Um, so for, for our scale, we're, we're just not quite there yet. Um, I also would maybe want to like try it in person before I'd want to invest in it. Um, we, we definitely are like last year we like had nothing. <laughs> I had like an earthway cedar. Um, and it, like didn't have very many tools and we're investing in in some better tools this year you know more more efficient for doing things um you know i bought i bought a better cedar i bought the jang cedar which is like a lot more a lot more efficient and a lot better okay here i'm gonna hold this up here so then you guys can see and like it never wants to focus so hopefully okay so i think mirror is at the top and i didn't buy that in there but all the other ones in those pictures is is the other lettuces that i got <laughs> never wants to focus if my face is in there so i can see the can see the screen there um yeah and so oh okay so here they're uh batavia uh, a French crisp or Batavia uh, lettuce. And these are relatively tolerant to hot weather and harvestable from baby to full size. Very crisp like romaine lettuce, but sweet and juicy without bitterness. The plants are the first open, are at first open like loose leaf maturing to a heavy compact bunch or head. Performs best with slightly more fertility than loose leaf for so full head size space, eight to 12 inches. Okay, so that, that is the other lettuces that I got. And I got the mix because I wanted like the, the range of colors. Because my goal is to grow these as my summer head lettuce. Um, and then have them out and, and have them displayed and have them look really pretty. Uh, this is page 80. Uh, yes, but th so this is for hot weather. These are supposed to be good in hot weather because I, I have hot summers. Um, yeah, so I, I bought like these are all a thousand. I think I bought a thousand of the mirror too. Um, and so I want, I want to experiment with that. See, see what they're like, because like, like I said earlier, I haven't really grown that much lettuce. So I was super impressed with the, the Salanova. Um, but other, other people really like these lettuces. So yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing, doing an experiment, doing a seed experiment. Give them a try. They're really pretty too. I think that the, I think, no matter what, they'll make a nice contrast to the the Salanovas because they look they look quite unique from the Salanovas. And you know, like I was saying earlier, I really like the butter butter lettuce Salanova for the look of the head. Um, but they they grew a little bit smaller in the heat, so the the butter the Salanova butters are super pretty. But if I had a bigger head option, you know, some people, some people want the, the size instead of the, instead of the, the, the beauty of it. So, you know, it, it'll just, it'll look pretty like to have like a mound of all the different lettuces. My, I, I did this year, I put a lot more effort into, um, 
thinking about what the end aesthetics are going to be at the market. Um, last year when I was picking what I was going to grow, my focus was really on what I thought would sell well, uh, what would be easy for me to grow, what I know other, other farmers grow and do well with. Um, whereas this year, um, I realized that like how good my market stand looked was part of, of what made something sell. Um, so I, I was using, like, I was trying to think like, oh, you know, I'll add this in. Maybe it's not my favorite variety, but it's going to look, it's going to look distinct from other, you know, other produce on my table and I'll make everything else pop. Um, it's like, there's, there's green kohlrabi and purple kohlrabi and everyone around me always grows the green kohlrabi. And I, I assume that maybe it grows better, um, but I made the decision to buy the purple kohlrabi again this year because I know having been able to go back and look at pictures of, of what my market display looked like in the spring, uh, everything's just green. Every, you know, everything's, green there's there's not a, it's not having the same contrast as my as my summer stand has which has you know a whole rainbow of colors um so being able to have the purple kohlrabi allows like my bok choy and and my my lettuces to to pop beside it you know same same as i love the white icicle radish which is white but maybe the better radish to grow in the spring is French breakfast because then it'll give a pop of, of red on the market table instead of, you know, the white ice coal. If it's placed beside bok choy on my table, they kind of just blend in together and then neither, neither gets the, the nice focus that I want them to have. But yeah, so I'm, I'm, re I'm really excited. We're, we also want to do some work on on like figuring out, get it, get, just getting our whole display better. Um, you know, we were actually, we were really happy with how uh, things worked out um, for for marketing last year. Like things look better than we thought it would, but but we want it to look even better. We need, we need it to look like so good that when people do Google searches of like best market displays, like ours pops up, that's the goal. We, we have to be the best in the world and then we'll sell, then we'll be big sellouts and we'll sell out at the farmer's market every time. Um, for keeping stuff cool, we bring stuff in coolers. Um, the, the way we display things is we have, um, what are they called? They, we got them from a restaurant supply store. And I think they're called steamer trays. They're like, uh, metal, they're like stainless steel tray, like low rimmed. I think they're like a two inch lip to them and and yeah so they're these stainless steel trays and then we put all of our produce into there and uh and and yeah so that nice and clean I take them home they clean really easily because I'm all like don't poison people paranoid um and then in the summer when when it was like really really hot because I was saying we have a Friday afternoon market um, what I did was I had extra of these metal trays and then we would put ice in, in the bottom tray and then we'd place the second tray on top and then it functioned like cooling the metal in the same way the steamer trays, you know, bring the heat up from hot water. Um, and that, that helped keep the produce a bit cool and then just trying to, trying to sell it if, you know, we try not to put everything that we have out on display. We you know, we make a big mound, but we don't put it all out. So then as things sell, we put out fresh stuff. The Honestly, the heat I found wasn't the hardest thing. The thing that killed my veggies the most was the wind. If we were down, even on a cool day, if it was windy, the wind would pull all the moisture out of the produce. And then, so the trick we had for that was we had a, a mister. We have like a, like a little spray bottle and we just go around and mist, 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 mist. Like, you know, just trying to keep as much moisture as possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it can, it can be hard when it's hot. It like, and I know a bunch of like my, my market neighbors had, had a really hard time. Um, you know, it is, is one of those things that, um, you, you know, we were just try this, try that, try this, try that. Okay. So I also have these, there wasn't only lettuce in there. This, the, it was just mostly lettuce. 
And this is all stuff that I'm super excited about. This is all things that I wasn't actually supposed to buy. This is like all stuff that like I was like, I can't resist. I have to, I have to buy all these amazingly cool things. Um, so, okay. So what I got here, okay. I'm going to hold, got to cover my face so it'll focus. Okay. So this, it's saying it's a sweet pepper, but this is supposed to be uh, like a hot pepper. I thought, um, these, these look super, these are like a mini little pepper. They're like, like that big, that opening. And they're kind of shaped like, like a teardrop. They have this like, like little curved neck. And I think they said that these are like, like just mildly spicy and they're like a Brazilian pepper and they, they like pickle them. And they're, this one is like a yellow. Um, and I, I think these sound super cool. Um, maybe, I think in the catalog they said that it was, it was, uh, Brazilian. Um, yeah, but so I'm, I'm super excited about this because we want to, we want to get all the hot pepper snobs to come buy seedlings from us. <laughs> so, so I wanted to, uh, make sure to have, uh to have like a whole mix of like really funky stuff. And I, this, like, I'd never heard of anything like this before. So I'm hoping that this is going to be unique and fun when all the pepper snobs come. And I'm like, well, you make sure you gotta buy one of everything. So I got this. So they buy more. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, oh, I'm, oh, I'm super excited about this. Okay. Let's find the other one. There is a, uh, there we go. Okay. So, I plant all my basil, basil, however you say it. I plant it way too close and way too tight. And uh, it's, they all get a uh, black mildew, I think, or downy mildew. I don't know. Some, something like that. It's, it's like a really common uh, basil disease. Uh, but I, lo I love the flavor of like the classic basil. So I'm like, whatever. It's just when it gets gross, I'll just rip it out. Um, and so Johnny's had all these like really cool disease resistant, um, basils here. Let's hold this up. Okay. Get my face out of there. So it'll focus. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's anyone can see that. Okay. So one of them is Rutgers devotion. And then the other one is Prospera. And so these are going to be, these are supposed to be disease resistant, um, like uh, Gino Vise style basils. So I'm, I'm really excited for this because like I grow a lot of basil. I like to eat a lot of basil personally. We always stock our freezer full of, full of pesto. Um, and I'm hoping that if my basil looks nicer that I'll be able to sell more basil. By the end of the season last year, my basil was looking a little sad and everyone was like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna, not gonna buy your garbage. <laughs> so hopefully, Hopefully these seeds will, will be the trick. I bought, um, bought a couple little packs so, you know, I can do a side-by-side -side comparison on, you know, which one I like for flavor, if the disease resistance, and then I'll probably still do some of the classic basil too. And, but I'm, I'm hoping that this might be the trick that I don't have to spread my basil out because I was doing it like spaced eight inches, I think. And, uh, you know, they, they were definitely touching and there's definitely bad airflow. All right, this I'm also super excited about. Uh, these are two Asian style eggplants and the the catalog, the, they totally, totally made me want to buy this. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing lemon basil and cinnamon basil for cut flowers. Um, and I, I like the cinnamon basil. It's like a Thai basil. So I, I actually use that in curries and stuff. Um, but I, I wasn't selling it. Yeah. Okay. So Asian eggplant. So an Asian eggplant, um, if you've only ever seen the classic eggplant, you know, like the big fatties, Asian eggplants are like long and skinny and they, they produce really, eat re really early. Um, so, cause I'm, I'm in a very, very sad place where my eggplants don't normally produce until September and then I only have like a month. Um, but I'm hoping with these, if I can grow them really good and get them in the ground better than last year, maybe I'll get a few months of harvesting off of them. And, um, 
And I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll sell some of these. But yeah, so I got Orient Express and Orient Charm. And I'm pretty sure if I remember, they they looked really good. I have I have the catalog. I probably have pictures of those ones because those are like definitely, those are some of their, those are some of their ones. But yeah, one's like purple and then one's like a stripey one. So I figured if I was going to sell anything, um, if I was going to sell anything, then maybe, maybe that would be the one that I could sell. There should be like an entire section just for eggplants in the same way there is for lettuce. But I suppose people don't love eggplants as much as I do. Maybe I can find that pepper too. Yeah. Nope. I don't know. Might be more, more work than it's worth find this but maybe I can find the boy here's a picture of something else that I got okay I'm not hunting for the picture anymore but I'll tell you about this one okay see up here this is another tomato that I got and it's not looking like super clear super clear in that picture um yeah because the other thing that I got from Johnny's this this was like a total this was bad of me. I went, I really wasn't allowed to buy these, but they said, okay. So I bought, I bought bronze torch and red torch. Those are those tomatoes that I was trying to show you. Um, and they said that they're similar to Juliet's. They said that they're, they're like this, the shape of like a Juliet, but fancy looking. Like one of them is like green, is like a darker stripey, like purpley stripies and the other one is like yellowy stripies so like a fancy looking Juliet which is like my number one favorite anytime anyone is like I like Juliet but maybe I like this I'm like okay I have to try it you just I trust your opinion you said that you like Juliet so I'm super excited to try these uh, these pack I bought the smallest seed pack size it's only 15 so these will not be available in my seed in my seedling sale if you're hoping to buy these um but yeah I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing seeing what these are like because I I love the Juliet. They're they're like a a mini Roma or or a, or like a big grape tomato. Um so yeah, the size they're they're pretty much perfect. Yeah, every, everyone should grow Juliet. Um but but yeah. Uh as for like the patio eggplants it's they just they don't do I don't grow anything in pots and if I'm gonna put in the work to grow grow an eggplant I want a bigger eggplant so I I like the Asian eggplants for the same idea as the the patio eggplants um which is that they produce earlier than like the big fatties my favorite big fatty one is traviata I have like really good luck with that um yeah oh wait so a bunch of like a couple other here are to this this is tomatoes um a couple other ones are stuff that i bought just for me um this like this was very expensive this this is big dina tomato and uh and i'm not all also not going to have this at the seedling sale um but these are these are like a red beefsteak, super high production, good disease resistance, greenhouse tomato. This, this is one that a lot of growers um, grow for market. It's supposed to really good flavor, but it, it holds up well for market. So it can handle all the bad customers who like to mash tomatoes. Don't touch at the market. Don't touch tomatoes. It's very bad. People have very bad big tomato etiquette. They're all like, nah. and then the... They're like, well, I mashed this tomato. Do you have a non-mashed tomato I can buy? Bad, bad people. But yeah, Big Dina can handle mild mashing. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm really excited to to try that. But that's for me, no sharing. Because <laughs> I only have 50 seeds of that. And I think the plan is we're gonna have like 300, 300 tomatoes. Um yeah. I know, bummer about, about Scott, about, yeah, yeah, bummed. Bummed that he's not growing anymore, but it sounds like he's still going to grow stuff. And I get it. There's not a lot of mo money in being a farmer. And he's, he's a young man in his prime who has carpentry skills, so he should uh, take advantage of it. 
Okay, this is another one that I'm pretty sure I bought for me. This is black cherry. I have like so many tomatoes that, <laughs> that it's hard to keep track of them all. But um, so my my market plan for tomatoes is the main thing I'm gonna grow um for tomatoes for selling is cherry tomatoes because then people don't mash them. It drive me crazy. Um, I like baskets of of cherry tomatoes sell really well. Um, and I want to have it be like a mix, a really pretty bit mix. So the main, oh, which reminds me. No, okay. I'm like, oh no, something that I was supposed to come. Um, so the main, the main cherry tomato that I grow for my mix is Sakura. And it's like super, super high producing. Um, red, it's a little, little bigger. Like, like it's like a big cherry tomato. I prefer a cherry tomato that's just like a little bit smaller. Um, it's it definitely like if you were to do a side by side comparison on like Sweet Million, um, it's significantly larger. Um, but yeah, really good flavor. Um, and then I am going to do Berry's Crazy Cherry, which is a yellow pear tomato. And then uh, Lametto is a green, green cherry tomato. And then this black cherry, uh, this this has some of those darker colors because I didn't have any cherry tomatoes picked out with this darker coloring. And then I think I I have some leftovers of pink bumblebee, which is like a pink stripey one. Um, it it wasn't super productive, but I'll probably throw I'll probably throw a few into the garden. Um, but yeah, so the my plan, main tomato market plan is I'm going to have like 150 cherry tomato plants and then I'll just have these. Oh, Sun Gold. Sun Gold's the other one. It's like an orange tomato that's like super, super good flavor. Yeah, get my cooler done. Ian's, Ian needs to come home. You need, first of all, he needs to make money. Ian's, Ian's away at work right now making money so he can do things like come back and spend it all and building me a walk-in cooler. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that needs to get done. It's still snowy outside. Like I, like I'm going to start now that I have my William Dam seed order in, I'll probably start my peppers soon here. Um, but yeah, my, my earliest, like March 1st, I do tomatoes inside, but it's kind of, it's not until like mid March really that I, that I start doing any sort of, any sort of outside yeah, sun gold and sun sugar I've heard are like the exact same thing. Like for the for the tomatoes. Yeah, yell and yellow pear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, berries crazy cherry. Ian didn't like the flavor on it because it tastes like yellow pear, but it has a really thin skin. Um, but like mind blowing the amount of, that it produces. Like it's it's crazy it, it very well named very well named I still have a ton of my wild boar uh farm seeds that I had like last year I bought I think I have 12 from um wild boar farms and I, I still have lots I bought 100 packs from him so I have lots left over so I'll have all those for my I do like a tomato seedling sale so I'll have all those I'll have all those for for this year for the sales um, oh, for zone, I'm, I think I'm about a zone, uh, 5B in, in the American, in the American things, or no, 5, 5A, um, and then, uh, and then 6A in the Canadian, in the Canadian, um, qualifications, uh, yeah, because we get, you know, we, we get hot in the summer, but we don't have, like, a crazy long season, yeah, Eastern Ontario. That makes like Canadian 5A for Eastern Ontario. Like Thunder Bay kind of area. No, that's Western Ontario. Um yeah. I don't I I I when you hear me talk about zone, I default to the American zone because most of you guys are American and if I said that I was that I was a a zone zone 6, then you'd all make fun of me and be like Oh, well, I'm zone six and look, all my stuff's growing. And then I'd be mad. So I have to say I'm zone five. So then then all of my Canadian friends can be jealous because they're like, how does she have all that in zone five? And I'm like, I'm talking American speak here. That's why I usually default. Like I try to, if I, if I can think of it, I'll like mention what the weather is in Fahrenheit, even though I like, I really don't know it. <laughs> I know a hundred. 
That's like 36. <laughs> I know 100 because I like telling that to Americans because they were like, what? 100 in Canada? Yes, we get hot sometimes in some places. I'm, I'm surprised they sold well. I really didn't like Yellow Pear. Yellow Pear is on my, like, like, I have my hit list and my shit list. Yellow Pear is on, like, my shit list because it's, this, the skins are so thick. The flavor is bad and it has thick skins. And it's like, you don't get two strikes. Two strikes, you're out with, with the tomatoes. There's just, there's too many good ones. I do like the prolific, but you should try the berries crazy cherry. It's, it's really similar to the yellow pear, but the thins, the skins it, are thin. So, so it's, it's way better. Yeah, I know. Peppers. I, I feel like I'm behind because all my friends, all my Instagram friends all have their peppers going and I'm very jealous. Um, but yeah, I know they're so, they're so slow. The tomatoes, though, you think the tomatoes are going to be slow, and then they're, like, outgrowing your space. You're like, ah! So I, I'm going to be very careful about March 1st. No cheating. <laughs> okay, the other thing that I bought, I bought this for my seedling sale, is I bought yellow brandy wine. Um, I I was happy. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the heirloom tomatoes. I've just, I, I had too many issues with them last year. Um, but I, I was pretty happy with the brandy wine. It had enough of like disease tolerance that that it uh, it didn't get all gross. So I'm um, give the give the yellow brandy wine a try. And if not, um, you know, it'll be it it was cheap. All the all those heirloom tomatoes are super cheap. So it'll be you know another option to have for my seedling sale. And then this is Muscovich. And I think that this was a total impulse buy. I think this was on sale is the story with this one. And I was like, oh, well, it's, it's quite affordable. I, I do my best, guys. I do my best to keep like this. Like this is literally like this is like my only impulse buy this year. So despite having like thousands of dollars worth of seeds, they all have a purpose. They all have I, they all were bought for a reason. They, no, no repeats, no overlaps. But yeah, I think I think I couldn't resist because I had a sale on this one. I think it was like a it's a bigger tomato. I don't have very many bigger tomatoes for me personally that I like. I'm still I, I like the cherry tomatoes and I like the Juliet, but I still haven't found a big tomato that's kind of like the perfect tomato. So I'm I have room for experimentation. And then this is I'm pretty sure that. I'm pretty sure that this is another guy lan. This is a green 70D improved, a leafy Asian green. But I'm pretty sure that this is a, this is a guy lan, and I love all the Asian greens. Um, and this was kind of unique from from the other stuff. I mostly bought the the um, I mostly bought the the Asian greens from West Coast Seeds, which I kind of talked about in in the last live video. Um, but yeah, I love Asian greens and yeah, I'm doing a bit of an Asian green experiment this year. So that's, that's everything. Look at that under an hour. And I talked about, I talked about it. Uh, okay. So what I'm talking about here is Johnny seeds, which is in the States. Um, but, but the... Next, next week, I will talk about, because uh, I got this in, I will talk about William Dam seeds, and this is Canadian, um, and, and uh, this, I'm pretty sure William Dam doesn't ship to the States. I'm pretty sure they don't do any international sales, they just do domestic sales, because um, I, when I put out that, that, uh, <laughs> so I, I'm like, oh, someone who like maybe has grown that tomato. Um, yeah, I put out that I put out the the video talking about like my ten favorite seed varieties, and and I talked a bunch about the Dima zucchini, um, which I get from William Dam Seeds. I'll have a big pack of Dima in here. 
Um, but it sounds like it's like they no one has it in the states. I ha I the as soon as the video went out, I was getting flooded with like emails and messages over on like Instagram and Facebook. You're like, where where do I buy these? I've been looking everywhere. Um, and yeah, so it seems like you know some of the stuff. The varieties just maybe are more common up here in Canada than than in in the states. Um, so the William Dam seeds there there's going to be some stuff in this order that's going to be specific um, just to like people in Canada being able to order it. Um, but most of the stuff in here is is going to be just like the more co like common farm seed. Like the stuff from William Dam isn't really going to be anything anything especially especially special um it's it's going to be a lot of just like good solid um common farm farm seeds but uh, like i don't even know guys considering how long it's been taking me to like try to get these tiny little seed packets like this is literally my entire farm like there is a crazy amount of stuff in this box so i don't know like well I'm, i'll try to keep it reasonable um I also got my my flower seeds in um and and so I'm I'll probably talk about that the week after um just because yeah there's I, I need to figure out I need to figure out what exactly it is I'm gonna be trying to say about my flower seeds because I don't want to get into there's a lot in that order and I don't necessarily want to get into all the details again because I already got into the details in that like what seeds I bought uh video um I'm the town I'm in is Kelowna in BC it's it's in the center of the province and it's it's still pretty south um I think we're about two hours from from the the border here about <laughs> um so we're not it's not northern bc it's definitely it's 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 warmer bc we're not on the coast so it's not temperate um we're we're this like weird weird uh spot we're we're basically the tip of the of the desert valley that starts in las vegas kind of like runs up in between in between all these um in between all these like mountain ranges and then it just kind of peters out like around where we are um so it's it's quite dry and then we get hot summers and we get some winter but it's it's not cold for it's not it's not a uh, like uh alberta cold i was talking to ian this morning and he said that it was minus 37 <laughs> celsius when he was when he was at work and uh, yeah I think, high, yeah, high level. I think Ian's like a little bit north of that right now. I think he's up, I think he's up closer to Fort Mac right now. But yeah, minus 37. We definitely do not get minus 37 here in Kelowna. <laughs> that, would, that would make me sad and then I'd have to move. Um, we're an American zone 5A or a Canadian zone 6A. Ugh. Minus three. Uh, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting really sad. Oh, someone else. So I saw this before and I completely forgot to answer it. Um, they were asking about peppers. Um, how, if I pre sprout them and I don't, I usually like, because I'm not just doing like one or two for the plants. I'm going to like, I'm going to do like 10 trays. So I'm going to have like what my trays are 72 trays. So I'll have 720 peppers. Um, so I'm I'm just gonna seed the trays just because it it'd be way too much work to to pre sprout and then try to keep it all organized and everything, um, but yeah when I do the well they're not just for me is the other thing like the 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 stuff that I'm gonna be starting to work on with all the peppers and the tomatoes like I'm I'm gonna grow 300 tomatoes for myself but like not not for me personally 50 for me 50 is my like number of tomatoes I need but 300 is so I can sell at the farmer's market but I'm gonna grow all these tomatoes and these peppers because in May we do a seedling sale and so I'll have the tomatoes and the peppers to sell for the seedling sale um so I'll, I'll be starting work on starting those so that I have things to sell in in May for the 
Yeah, and I, I think I think when I when I when I go to do the peppers, because I don't really have any videos to make right now. Um, just like I'm not doing, I'm literally doing nothing. I'm just sitting around drinking tea, obsessing about seeds, spending two hours talking about seeds because I have nothing better to do. Um, yeah, we're not we're not that high. We're like we like we're I think we're at about a thousand or like twelve. 1200 feet above above sea level <laughs> ah come on minus 37 minus 37 is about as cold as it ever gets <laughs> i wish i was having a heat wave all the snow had melted but all right but back to the back to what i was gonna say about i'll probably make a video about starting the peppers and like how like how i do seedlings oh, 72 <laughs> and like this is the time of year when I have to like not be allowed to go on like Instagram and stuff because I see everyone and they're like oh just planting my tomatoes out down here in Texas I'm like oh, oh, oh it makes me so mad like I need I need it to be like July 1st and then I need to talk to my Australian friends on Instagram and then I'll be like oh Serena I'm so jealous of you and then then I'm like ah oh, yes feed feed me with your jealousy but there's there's a lot there's a lot of the year that I uh that I'm jealous of everyone but yeah so I'll, I'll do a video about how I get my get my seedlings going um and I'll probably have to remake yeah, as, as a, a filter to make sure no one sees, I don't see everyone's stuff to make me jealous. Um, yeah, I'll probably do another video. So the way that we grow, um, so we sell our seedlings in paper pots that I make out of newspaper because um, we don't want to buy like 1800 uh, little plastic pots and be making all that plastic pot garbage. Um, we find that the, the paper pots work really good, especially for stuff like, like tomatoes and peppers where they have to like grow for a while. Um, and then you want to like plant them. And so the paper pots, you can just plant them right into the ground. You don't have to like depot them and then it just completely biodegrades. Um, so I'm going to be making a million <laughs> paper pots, um, and I'll, I made a video last year about how to how to make the paper pots. Um, but but I'll probably make another one again just because people need to start making these paper pots. They're like they're super super easy and like they they work really well. And I always see all these stupid ideas for people like origami folding paper pots. I'm like no like eggshells makes me so mad the eggshells i need to like make a whole video do not grow your seedlings in eggshells it's a horrible idea don't do it um but yeah the, these paper pots work really good so i'm i'm just every year i'm gonna make a video about paper pots just so you guys until until it takes off until i get my viral paper pot video and everyone starts making paper pots i'll just keep doing it over and over again um but yeah, they, they work really, really good. Um, so I'll 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 make sure to do that that up again, uh, especially because I'm gonna be spending many hours doing it, so I might as well. Um, but yeah, there's there really isn't much going on. But yeah. Okay, I don't know. Do you guys do you guys have any questions? Uh Google for figuring out your zone. Like put put in where you are, like growing zone. Like I like I I default to Google because what's the point of hunting? You know, farmer's almanac is probably like, you know, if you want to go on a website, but like go Google will tell you. I Google everything. The the like I I I always say I have uh I have my farm degree from uh Google University. Yeah, oh, you guys, you got to stop teasing me about being in all these nice zones. I, for the way to find, I'd probably put like where you are. So like I'd, I'd Google, I'd Google like uh Kelowna growing zone and then, and then have that like rather like it. So, cause it'll come up for whatever your nearest, your nearest city is. And then, then there's going to be some leeway, obviously, you know, even like in my old backyard, there were spots that were warm 
in spots that were, you know, would frost sooner. Like if, if it's shady, you know, the, it'll be, the ground will be frozen later, you know, and when the frost comes, it'll, it'll be more damaging because the ground won't be as warm. Um, you know, the growing zone is just like a general, a general starting point. Um, you know, the same, like the other thing too, is like, you'll want to know your like last frost date, your first frost date. Um, but those, those are just like windows to, for general ideas for me to figure out when my, when my last frost date is, you know, like I, I'm like, oh, I don't know, some, sometime in the beginning of May. Um, and then I, then I just start obsessively checking the weather and, and, you know, you just, I, I never trust weather that's longer than a five day forecast, but you know, it's just, you kind of have to be like, oh, maybe, okay, I'm going to go for it. And then, you know, or just play it really safe. Like a really common thing around here is to say, oh, don't, don't plant until, until the May long weekend, which, you know, is like near the end of May. Um, you know, and then, you know, have the frost come then, but, you know, maybe there was two weeks earlier that you could have planted type thing. Um, you know, like I'm definitely going to take risks for, for, for planting and because I'm like, well, like I'll have seedlings coming, right? Like I won't necessarily put all my tomato seedlings out when I think that it might still frost, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to be trying other stuff. Cause I'm like, if it dies, it doesn't matter. I'll just, I'll do it again, especially for direct seed things. You know, it's, it's, it's worth the experiment for me because you know, I, the goal for me is to learn to push it as far as possible. And I also have, man, June, well, <laughs> June 3rd, that does suck. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, the other thing too, is you can get like season extension stuff, right? So like I have like metal hoops and they go in, in the ground over the beds and then plastic that goes out. And so, you know, I could have stuff out when it's still cold, you know, opening and closing the plastic every day. And then, you know, if I have the hoops still on the ground, then, then, you know, cover it back up, cover it back up if there's a frost risk. Yeah, exactly. Like, and the keep track of your own garden and, you know, you need to learn where you're growing. And that's, that's a lot of, and that's a lot of, of what we're, what we're doing this year, again, what we'll be doing for the next five years. Um, because this, you know, this is going to be our second growing season at this specific property. And where we are is, is quite different from our old, you know, backyard garden. Um, we're like a little bit higher we're like our old place was like close to the lake so that like helped do a lot of like season extension we didn't like we just were like the weather patterns can change from like neighborhood to neighborhood so you know moving half an hour away actually does does totally change a lot of the growing we get different weather patterns because the you know the weather goes up like these tiny valleys. So it's, it's crazy how, how much just that little bit of a difference can make. Um, and I saw for like, who does everything? Um, it's just me and Ian. Um, but the story of that is like, I, I don't work. And then Ian, Ian, well, I guess I'm, I'm officially going to be filing taxes as a farmer. I made enough, <laughs> I made enough money that I have to have to file taxes as, as having a job this year. Um, but Ian, Ian works away in the winters and then makes the majority of, of the money for the household. And then he's, he's home full time in the summer. So, so, um, that means that both of us are here like full time during the growing season. So it like, we, we get a lot done just, and you know, we, we bought this specifically so we could like do, do all this stuff. We, we like move to this place to do all these things. Like this is what we want to do. This is like yeah, every day that we like go and spend 12 hours like out in the garden is a good day. Like that's not like, we're never like, we're never like, Oh no, it's oh Oh, like we had to work hard today. Oh, boohoo. Like so sad. Like, Oh no, I had to like plant I had to plant a thousand dollars worth of seed today. Like that's awesome. That's like the best way you could possibly spend the day.
Yeah. Well, for leaving, that's the reason why I do the live videos at this weird noon time. My son has daycare on Wednesdays, and then my daughter gets. I have to go pick her up at two thirty. <laughs> so this is like my this is like my perfect live video window without them yelling at me to go make them a snack. So I de I definitely I know. <laughs> Um, yeah, any, any other questions? Um, because if not, I'll try to make this not, not a two hour video, because I keep looking at them and feeling guilty. I'm like, I know I can talk about seeds for 24 hours straight, but I probably shouldn't <laughs> talk about seeds for 24 hours straight. Yeah, whatever. I mean, technically it's not paid yet. We still... We still have a we still have a ways to go until I actually make until I make an income. Last year the numbers for the farm was because um, our goal was to get uh, ten thousand in 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 um, profit not profit ten thousand gross so ten thousand worth of sales because that was the number that we had to hit in order for our property to get farm status. The property that were that like when we bought it, it wasn't being farmed at all or anything, and it hadn't had farm status in in a bunch of years. So to qualify for farm status, because we're we're zoned for farming, but you you're not a farm until you're actually like working it as a farm. So ten thousand was what we needed to sell, um, and we did it. We yay! We're we're officially a farm now which uh, opens up like a few more, like this year we're going to be building a farm stand on the property and we weren't able to do, our zoning didn't allow us to do that until we had farm status. And then it also like, it helps for like property taxes and stuff. Um, but the amount that we we did sell, we did, we, I think we did 14,000 was, was our final number. And we there was like definitely more that we could have sold but Ian, Ian was over it. He was like, uh, we need to get some like actual work done, not just selling everything. <laughs> and then I got, and then I got a cold. So I was like, fine, whatever. <laughs> I was like sick for like the entire month of October. So I was like, fine, fine. I won't do the farmer's market by myself while I'm sick at like five in the morning outside and you won't help me. Um, but yeah, the, but even though we made like 14,000, um, we probably spent like about 20,000 in, in like building, like building stuff. Um, and the goal for this year is, is we hope to, we hope to get, we hope to do 30,000 in sales this year. Um, but we'll, we'll probably also spend about that much, you know, like, like, I think my seeds are going to be 3000, um, when I'm all done. Uh, we have, like, I've already spent a couple thousand on tools, um, and I'll probably spend a couple thousand more still on, on other, like, tools and growing supplies. There's, there's, like, some, some, like, infrastructure that we need to do, like a walk-in cooler is, you know, even the cheapest one that we can slap together is probably still going to be, like, $5,000, um, you know, building the the farm stand that we want to build. We want to like build like a little shed, you know, we want it to look nice and, you know, it'll probably be $5,000 too. It's, uh, it's really surprising how much all those like building projects, like just the bits and pieces really, really start to add up quickly. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, we were hoping to double sales because we need you need we need to be able to sell more if if we can't sell the stuff then we'll never be able to be to be a farm um but um but yeah it's i don't expect to start making money until like year four probably would be like my first year that i assume we'd ever like you know make a profit and and then like maybe by year five, like things will get settled into like starting to like, you know, make a, a steady profit for like year five and on. Um, but I figure probably by the very end of, of the whole farm building process, it'll, we'll probably have invested about a hundred thousand dollars into everything. Um, just, you know, like irrigation will cost us like 10, $12,000, you know, like, all the equipment, it's just bits and pieces, 
you know, it just, it, it adds up compost. I'm probably going to spend a couple thousand dollars on compost every year <laughs> forever. Yeah. So, you know, like the, the numbers are always, the numbers are always like, Ooh, <laughs> you know, but it, but the scale's big, right? Like the, the hope is that eventually, um, you know, it can provide, like, we'll be able to have an employee and then it'll still provide, you know, like $30,000 worth of profit. And, you know, maybe we could even like build like another business on the property too, that would, you know, profit another, another amount of money too. Um, you know, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> It's definitely fun to grow on on the farm scale. Yeah, well, like last year was just our first year for the farm. Um, we like we'd been thinking about farming, uh, like our old channel trailer for our channel was like the story about how we like had almost bought a farm and how like it's a bad idea to buy a farm and that like I'm really glad that we never bought this farm because instead what we're doing is we're having a vacuum and it's all the growing that we need but then obviously the second you make something like that you just like oh don't mind me ah. <laughs> and then we go and buy a farm um but but yeah like we both we both just really like growing food and and so it's it's super fun and like you know growing a garden is is fun too like having having the backyard garden and having all that food like that that was amazing um, you know, I'd never, as long as I am like physically capable, I don't want to ever not have, have like food that I'm growing for myself, but it's super fun to be able to grow lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of food. Like, you know, to go out and to just like pull up like hundreds of carrots, just like, just pulling them and pulling them and pulling them, just like going and going and going, like emptying out a 50 foot bed of carrots with like thousands of carrots is like so fun it's just like oh look at it all like yeah you know, i feel like like scrooge mcduck swimming around in his like gold pile and like you can't you don't get to do that unless like you have something to do with the food it, you know it, just, it, it would be a waste if you're doing that for yourself so it's it's, su it's super fun for me to get to to grow all the food you know it's we enjoy growing food um, you know, we, we enjoy like interacting with people too. So it's, it's fun to be able to, to sell this stuff. Yeah, man, that's a, that's a lot for a balcony. Yeah. I, I used to live in an apartment and I actually had, uh, had a community garden plot. Uh, my very first garden was, uh, when I was in university and I went and got a, got a community garden plot and it was way too big. There were thousand square foot <laughs> garden plots, which is like, that's too big for a first time garden. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun, but it, you know, it's, it's really amazing what you can do even just in those, in those patios and, and pots and stuff. I like, not me. I kill everything in pots, but, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, sorry. I didn't hear yeah, I didn't see the, what was it? I don't know. The greens for flower filler. Uh, I don't know. Like I've, I've seen some people online talking about using peas, uh, like lately, like I'm in some flower groups and I've seen them talking about for spring, uh, filler using like pea, pea branches. Um, and it's supposed to work really good. And I do you I did use um, some seed seed pods from from like yeah like cabbage cabbage family type things I like I had some kales and I had some bok choys that went to seed and so I used their seed pods in in the in the flowers as like a filler um, but. Yeah, corn salad, I don't know, maybe too hot. Cause I know like corn salad is supposed to be, be like a cooler temperature. Um, but, or, oh, and then are you using potting soil or cause it, you know, this time of year it could be really dry. Oh, right. I mean, sorry, really wet. Things are like way too wet. Oh, I've had, I've had hyssop before and like, 
that, like I love it. It's a super pretty plant. I think we're just on the cusp of uh, of where it's hardy, you know. And so I like it keeps dying on me, and I like it's it's not nice enough for me to seed it every year. Um, you know, if I can find a spot for for it to to grow. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't do salad like I wouldn't do seedlings for for like a salad, like especially like a corn salad. They're so small. You think that'd be something that you'd you'd direct seed, you know. But yeah, maybe too wet. That's the only thing I can think is that the the corn salad and stuff it, if it there's something like Google dampening off. Um that's that's like a common one for for killing the salad off. And then if if your potting mix isn't it doesn't like have good enough drainage, um, you know it can be really bad for that. Um, but or like not enough if if like they're just not germinating, that would kind of be my best guess. Or the seed's bad. Maybe the seed already germinated. And my fave seed company is uh, William Dam. William Dam seeds. This is my new favorite. I only started ordering them from them like two years ago, but yeah, they're like really good prices, um, but they're only in Canada. Um, if, if I was in the States, oh, let me tell you, spent seven, eight, $700 on lettuce, but if I was in the States, I'd spend a lot more money at Johnny's. It's just, it's too expensive for me. Well, like where, where are you? Like, you know, like I, I'm not a huge, I, like, I don't think that the seed company... Okay, so this this is my seed company rule for me. Because, like, I'll spend money on seed, but, like, I'm also, like, I want... Uh, I want... I want to be... I still don't want to spend excessive amounts of money. Uh, oh, so Whirly Bird Nasturtium. That's another one that I got emails from people about. I get it from William Dam. Sounds like it, it's maybe one of those ones that is is yet again like a harder to find one. But I've also grown Jewel, and it's the same. It has the same um, Jewel Nasturtium. It's it's mounding with the flowers sitting up high. I found the Whirly Bird was a little bit more productive, but the Jewel's a good substitute for Whirly Bird if you can't find it anywhere. Um, yeah, because like I know Johnny's doesn't have the whirly bird. Okay, so what I was saying, seed companies. The, how to pick a seed company to shop from. This this is my rule. My rule is if the seed company doesn't sell in seed sizes so that they could be selling seed to farmers, if they only have like one single packet size, they don't have like a range of, of packet sizes so that they could be potentially servicing farmers, then I don't necessarily trust that they have good prices. That, that, that is, that's my seed, that's my seed shopping rule. Because like all, most seed companies, like here, let, uh, let's get a big stack of seeds. Okay, yeah, so like most seed companies, they'll have like a standard, standard pack of seeds and like no matter what there a pack of seeds is always going to be it's always going to be you know at least let's say like west coast seeds like their cheapest seed packs quite often are 319 is their price and then depending on the seed you know then the price gets higher you know it can go up to 699 for their smallest side seed pack um but Everything that is a seed pack that is three nineteen is like super cheap seeds compared to those like six ninety nine seeds. So yeah, it's three nineteen to get like the single pack because you know they they it costs money to like make this pack. It costs money to you know do do the work to sell a single pack of seeds. So there has to be a bare minimum. But then when you get into you know these big farm size packs. You know the seed that was three nineteen. You know maybe you buy this pack and it's like five times the size of the small pack, but the small pack was three nineteen, and this is only like you know ten dollars, even though it's way way bigger, and that's because the pricing is based on on like what the actual seed costs. Um, you know, and it could be that you know this th like here's a perfect example. This is like a pound of kale. 
and it's like $33, you know, and then here's, here's a smaller pack of lettuce and it's like $26. Um, and like, you know, but this, oh, this is a crazy amount of seed. Um, but you know, like, and, and, uh, yeah, so this is red Russian kale. This seed is like super, super cheap. Like this, like this is as cheap as it gets. Um, but if I bought a seed pack that was this size of winter boar kale, like this pack could be the same price as this massive pack of red Russian kale because winter boar kale is like a super expensive seed. Um, you know, whereas like if a company just has like, doesn't offer you these sizes, I don't trust that their pricing is based on on the seed price and if their pricing isn't based on the seed price like if you don't have the option to buy bulk and and you know to get to get value in the bulk then there's a good chance that they just have a standardized seed pack price as a company like every single seed pack is 450 um and it's in no way a reflection of what's inside and then also maybe they're making decisions based on making sure that their seed pack is always really profitable for them at 450. And so like here's an example for me. I I'm not I sell my tomato seedlings for 250. Um so there's lots of tomatoes out there where the seed is like 50 cents, a dollar, like really 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 good tomatoes and this year I didn't buy any of those because at 250, like the labor that it takes to make a 250 plant is like way more than 250. So there's no world that I can spend a buck on the tomato seed for you, you know, to then only give me back a dollar fifty in after all the work of of growing the plant. So for me, the tomatoes, you know, and even some of the peppers. There was there's like hot peppers that I wanted to grow people had recommended oh you gotta you gotta try this you gotta grow this you gotta grow this and i went to buy the seed and the seed was too expensive and i was like i i can't afford i'm not gonna change my pricing on that one specific plant so that it's you know three dollars instead of 250 um i like i need a standardized pricing so that means i can't afford to offer that um so my concern with companies that don't offer you know a range of sizes is that they're going to be making the same decisions in their seeds that I'm making in in my seedlings of, you know, everything has to be affordable. And and then also, you know, like if if everything's 450, you know, then may, like maybe at another company, like, you know, that cheaper one that is actually the one you want would be 319, like what West Coast Seeds sells their cheap one at. So that that's my like rule about shopping if I like see a company that that is like yeah we just have seed packs or like you know a company that has like really good marketing that also like gets me nervous like like I made sure that my farm I'm like I want everything to look really 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 good because I need it to look good to justify to justify my pricing so I'm always like if something like looks really, really good, I'm like, yeah, but why? <laughs> but I'm I'm a paranoid person. So um, and then for the am I garden, am I gardener? Um, I don't buy from him because I'm I'm Canadian. I don't I don't buy <laughs> anything from the States unless I have to. Um, and like th that he's like a perfect example of like what I was saying about like, you know, the all the seed packs are the same price. Um, but his price is really good. Like I, I think he's an actual excellent source for like new gardeners. Like especially like when you don't you don't care about like if you're not to the point. I'm trying to think of like how to say this. Um, I here perfect example. I think that this two hundred and thirty dollar tin of lettuce seed is a great deal. Um, if you're the type of person who thinks that I've lost my mind <laughs> for spending $230 on lettuce seed, then you are an excellent candidate for the Am I Gardener, Am I Gardener seeds, right? Because like, 
he has a really great selection. You know, he's he's got all these options. The prices are really good. You're just not going to find any of those. You're not going to find tomatoes that are a buck a seed from from what he has. All all the stuff that he has are like good classic um, open pollinated stuff. It, none of none of his stuff is like expensive hybrid seed. Um, but for the for the most most growers, like that that stuff's great. And he has like enough options now. You know, it's not like he only offers carrot. You know, you go to the dollar store and you can have carrot, <laughs> broccoli, cabbage, right? You know, he like he does. He has options, right? So he's 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 a great source. Um, for me, like you know, when I'm buying a literal pound of of uh, of like red Russian kale. I'm sure he has red Russian kale. I'm sure this is one of his options. Um, and I'm sure if you took the amount of the amount of you know seed that's in here, like it, it would be way more than like you know the thirty four dollars to get the volume of seed that's in here. But what what home gardener needs a pound of red Russian kale? Like most people don't even need an entire packet of an entire packet of red Russian kale, you know, it's, so it, it's definitely, it's a good option for, you know, for growing, but I don't save seed. There's, there's no world that saving seed is, is worth my time. There, <laughs> in, in the same way that it, I think it makes a lot of sense for me as a farm to grow carrots, but I never really grew carrots in my home garden. You know, there, it's, it's too much work. Um, the, the one thing about saving seed is it's not simple, right? It's, it's not like it, saving seed isn't like you just go out and like get seed. Like if you want to be able, if you want to be able to get like good, good, pure seed, you, you don't just go and collect seeds out of the garden because they've, they've all cross pollinated with each other and everything. You know, there, there are some things like beans Beans are apparently one that that it's really hard for them to cross pollinate. Um, you know, and tomatoes, like most tomatoes are wind pollinated. So there's a good chance that it, when you save seed on tomato, it, it'll be, it won't have been cross pollinated. But I like, I also, I don't necessarily grow a lot of open pollinated seed, but a lot of the seed that I grow is, is hybrid seeds. And so saving saving seeds off of hybrids you're not going to get you're not going to get um you're not going to get like a true to seed plant um you know like i i lo i think it's cool saving seeds but i'd i'd rather get i'd rather pay money and get good seeds like the amount of work that it would take for me like you know so uh, here let's let's get my seeds uh, my one million, one million seeds. Okay, here. Uh, all these seeds. Look at all these seeds. For me to be able to get all of that, you know, all that diversity, all those different varieties, like, you know, all those great options that's in, in that box. You know, it would take me like a lifetime. It would take me an infinite amount of space and a lifetime to do it. Um, so, like, it's amazing. It's amazing to me that I can pay someone to do it for me. I'm, I'm, I'm in the same way that I think it's amazing that I can go on the internet and find all the information that I need. Like, like, just like I stand in my yard and I hold up like a phone, the phone that I'm talking to you through all my friends around the entire world. I like hold it to the air and I'm like, Google, tell me, give me all the knowledge of the universe. And it does. It's like magic. It's amazing. You know, it, it, I think I think the fact that I can have people around the world growing the best seeds I could possibly get for me is like, it's amazing. I'm so lucky to have that. If I like, like the end times come and the apocalypse and shit's hit the fan. And now I have to save my, all of my own seeds. You know, I'm, I'm a very sad Serena and I'm <laughs> missing the days of when I could get really good seeds in the mail. <laughs> um, 
that I saw someone asking about uh, about my university degree. So I have I have a farming degree from Google University. You you too can get one. It just takes four years of steady googling. <laughs> um, but I I did go to university and I have the most ridiculous degree ever. I have an English and art history degree, which uh, the only thing it has ever taught me in life is how to bullshit well. <laughs> that that's the only thing that that an art history degree will teach you. Uh, how to make really good sounding bullshit. So I figure it's like probably pretty good for like coming up with good marketing. Um, if second party starting your seeds. Yeah, yeah, potentially. Um, oh, I'm not, no, I don't do art. Uh, art history. That means I, I'm qualified to critique someone else's art. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I, for, because I know lots of people are all excited about flower farming, um, from, from, like, how beautiful the flower farm section looked, and I think it's a really good idea for a lot of flower farmers to, to not s start their own seed, um, you know, to actually buy in, to buy in seedlings, because, like, when, when you crunch the numbers, it's, like, it's, it's so much like like worth the labor to uh, to I'm, I'm laughing at you guys about the degrees. Um, yeah, it's for when you consider like what seeds cost, what what the soil costs, what the trays and everything costs, like how much work it is. You know the like it it's so easy to mess up seedlings, right? Like. I, like I need to, when I have my seedlings going, I need to be in there twice a day checking on them. You know, like there there's no vacations when when the seedlings are going. It's like yeah, I could like check on them on the afternoon and then like you know oh like make sure to water them really good and they'll be fine. They'll be fine for you know like a twenty four hour period. Um, but yeah, like it's 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 a lot of work and and like you can mess up and then lose all that or you just don't grow them very well. Um, and then, you know, and then at that point, like what's, you know, what's the point of having done it? Um, but if, if you are buying, if you're a farmer and like you're buying volume of like seed started, there's like, it's definitely, it's, it's a really, it's a really good idea for doing. Um, Cause then you don't, you don't have to invest into the, into the things that you need to do seed starting. You know, like we have like a really, really primitive seed, uh, seed starting setup. I have like a, a metal rack and I have some like shop lights. Um, and so like I like I'm able to to do my like tomatoes and my peppers and stuff. Um, but, you know, like I like there was a lot of stuff I wanted to grow this year um, ahead of time to get into the ground early to get like a really big kickstart on my season. And, and I just, I can't, you know, I've, I basically, I've had to prioritize the, the really, you know, the really difficult stuff, like the peppers and the tomatoes. And then, you know, the things that I could have gotten a month head start on by, by doing them. Um, you know, I'm just like, not this year, it's just not going to happen this year. You know, ba basically to do the volume that I'd like, to do early enough, I'd need to have a real greenhouse with heat in it. And the cost of heating a greenhouse, you know, for, for a couple months to get that season started, uh, would be a lot, a lot of money, let alone the cost of like getting an actual greenhouse in. Um, so yeah, definitely like getting someone else to do your seedlings is, is, like m maybe the best idea ever um and like even at another thing is too as a home gardener i only started doing seedlings um like three this will be my fourth fourth year yeah this will be my fourth year um and i like you know i used to buy 50 tomatoes and and like you know like a couple dozen peppers and you know like bit like onions I bought all my onions I'd like I'd go and I'd spend 
you know, like probably spend a couple hundred bucks on, on seedlings. Um, and it like money well spent. <laughs> it was, it was cheaper for me to do that than, than to start my own seedlings, even, even at the, the scale of the 50, 50 tomatoes. Um, germination chamber. Uh, so <laughs> the way I grow my seedlings is I have them on these racks and the lights that I have aren't, aren't nice lights. They're like, they're shop lights. So they get like super, super hot. And then I have them in the bathroom of our outbuilding, which has its very own, um, has its very own like heat, electric heat register. And so basically when I have all the lights plugged in and I have like, I crank the heat up to like full heat and then like all the moisture from all the trays like on there and the heat it basically turns that entire room <laughs> into a germination chamber um and and it works <laughs> it works pretty good uh so i'm i'm not until i'm not doing that anymore uh i'm definitely i, I have no need for a germination chamber but yeah like definitely worth the money it, like even even if i if i had a heated greenhouse you know i was doing this huge volume like having a germination chamber where, cause it like a germination chamber can like shave like 50% of your like germinating time off just by giving it those ideal conditions. And you know, like, so we said that, that the Salanova is costing me five cents a seed. Um, you know, if, if I'm having issues germinating the Salanova, and I'm only getting a 50% germination rate just because my, my germinating conditions aren't great. Um, you know, at five cents, a lost seed, um, when you're doing like really, really big volume on, on a farm, the germination chamber will, will pay for itself, you know, in a, in a couple of years. <sighs> it's covered on, so we, we have a carport on the house trying to think when the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so our property like runs like east like east to west lengthwise um and then we have a carport and like a covered area on the on the east of the house Yeah, so, and then there's, like, a little bit of, like, a porch. My house has, like, eight front doors. Like, every single time someone had done an extension on my house. Because my house is 120 years old. <laughs> it's And it's, like, you know, it's very, very uh, hodgepodge Lego. Um, yeah, but, so there is a front door that has, like, an overhang on, on the south. Which, like, maybe is kind of like a veranda. Yeah, like... The, but who knows? Who, like, who knows with the house? It's, it's not, it, it's nothing that's useful because our house for like growing stuff, um, cause our house is actually pretty shaded. We have a couple big trees up, up at the, up near, near our house. Whereas like the rest of the property is just like full sun. Like we get like sun from like, you know, the m moment the sun comes up to the moment it goes down for most of the property. So like we did like, it's really great for growing. We're on this, like, we have, it's flat or fairly flat and we have irrigation for the whole thing and, you know, pure sun, but yeah. Yeah, but, like basically I have T5s, um, medicinal herbs. I don't know. <laughs> I know I made, like, I made a post on Instagram cause I like, I made like a calendula balm, but I, I don't, I don't really do too much medicinal herbs. I'm Canadian. We have like healthcare. I just go to the doctor. <laughs> um, yeah, well, honestly, most of, most of my garden is, uh, most of my herb garden is uh, like either stuff that I grow for like, cocktails or like, you know, herbal, herbal tea. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't necessarily, um, grow, like grow it for, for medicinal purposes. I, I grew Ian some medicinal marijuana last year, but you know, I, I don't necessarily think it's especially medicinal. I think it's probably more recreational. 
Yeah, the main medicinal thing in the balm that I make is the beeswax because my hands get so dry. My hands like crack from all the from all the time and the dirt. It dries them out. And uh, and then I, I make a balm with like a really, really, really heavy beeswax. And then the beeswax almost does like a like a coating, like a waterproof coating on my hands. So I'll just like I'll be putting the cream on like all day. Like as soon as as soon as I can feel like the wax coating start to start to go just because and I try to wear gloves as much as possible. But it's the gar gardener hands. Gardener's hands are <laughs> a serious thing. <laughs> I had like cracks, like calloused cracks, like like how people get on their heels all over my hands last year. It was it was pretty bad. I should I should I should make a video about that come spring. <laughs> sad gardener hands. Show you guys how sad my hands are and what I do to make them slightly less sad. Spoiler: wear gloves. <laughs> um. Okay, any more questions? Because I should probably go, because I said that I said that I wasn't gonna make a two hour long video, but apparently I lied. <laughs> okay, well thanks for thanks for hanging out. It is I it always blows my mind that that uh, that anyone wants to come and hear me obsess about seeds for for two hours. I mean, I like I'm excited about seeds. I want to obsess about seeds for for two hours. But uh, but yeah, it like Ian's always like, you're lucky that the internet exists because there isn't there isn't that many people like you, and you've clearly found them all to come and like be your friends and listen to you talk about seeds. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's always fun. <laughs> um, and like I said, next week I have my William Dam, um, seeds and I'll probably, there, there's a lot of stuff in there. So I'll probably try to focus it in to talking about, about like, like farming kind of maybe some like farming versus like gardening stuff. Um, I, I'm like, I might talk a bit about how like I changed what I do when, when I, um, when I went from having like the home garden to, to the farm. Cause a lot of, a lot of what I have in there is, is going to be like those production crops. And it's, a, it's a little bit of a different way of thinking, but I'll, I'll maybe like kind of try to reference back to like what I would have done back when I had like a home garden to make it a, a little bit more useful not just me obsessing about the farm because that's another thing I can do for 24 hours I can tell I can talk about all my plans I have for the next five years on the farm until like I literally pass out from exhaustion because I'm super excited about farming um but yeah and then I'll make sure to film um what I do when I get those peppers going so I can actually make another video because <laughs> I haven't made very many of those other than these live ones. But yeah, so that's my plan. And yeah, I'll be here next week and hopefully I'll see you guys. Okay, thanks. Thanks for joining me.